Editors note, the views and opinions expressed below are those of the author and do not necessarily reflect the views of Sherdog.com, its affiliates and sponsors or its parent company, Evolve Media. Asterisk 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 Europe 1, what are your thoughts on Michael Bisping's cheeky commentary? I thoroughly enjoy Bisping in the commentary booth. He's obviously very knowledgeable and can provide a good level of technical information which is the no. One quality I look for in a color commentator. And of course, he's Michael Bisping which means his personality will shine through. That same simultaneously abrasive, playful, and fearless wordsmith that managed to get a rise out of everyone from Luke Rockhold to Georges Saint. Pierre makes for an excellent additional to the broadcasting team. No, he may not be as by the book as Dan Hardy, as jovial as Daniel Cormier or as heavily detailed as Dominic Cruz, but his unique blend of traits makes him rather fun to listen to in his own way. Quite frankly, I like the variety. The UFC is pumping out events at a workmanlike rate reminiscent of an assembly line. Needless to say, if you watch every single event and every single fight, weekend after weekend, it can get pretty monotonous. Seeing the same Reebok fight kits, the same video packages, and dizzying number of names trotted out so frequently, it's difficult to tell some things apart. Having a bit of change with the personalities and styles in the commentary booth is one way of breaking things up a bit. I know that Bisping's brand of humor isn't for everybody and it may be off-putting to some. As long as it doesn't reach the ridiculous levels of the Snoop cast, it's fine by me. Touch but dork, do you think having Jones doing the July card or the international spectacle of Khabib in Abu Dhabi is anywhere near as hype as any of Connors or Ronda's fights or even previous summers? I'm honestly not sure where to rate the hype levels of appearances by John Jones, Khabib Nurmagomedov, Connor McGregor, or Ronda Rousey. First, for simplicity's sake I'll define hype based on the live experience watching in shockwaves outside of our normal bubble. Fortunately, I can give you my personal experiences from being in attendance when all four have stepped inside the octagon. I'll break it down chronologically. First, I attended UFC 184 as a fan. Rousey was nearing the height of her mainstream popularity and headlined against Katz Ngano in Los Angeles, near her hometown of Riverside. Having a massive star in a main event in a major market known for its love of mixed martial arts was a big enough event. Adding that to the huge contingent of female fans doubled the levels of hype. The audience at the weigh-ins consisted of an amazing amount of young girls wanting to see their then-undefeated hero. The parents were even kind enough to let their daughters come in full GIS showing that Rousey's emergence was just as much of a social landmark as it was an athletic one. For all the events I've attended with Jones on the card, there is always a certain level of intrigue. Of course some of this a direct result of the controversy surrounding him outside of the cage and his issues with USADA. UFC 214, 232, 235 and 239 have all been accompanied by whispers of pets, rivalries and regulatory nightmares. There's also the simple reality that Jones is undoubtedly the single greatest talent the sport has ever seen. Whether that attention is glowing praise or raised eyebrows of suspicion, everyone watching knows that they're bearing witness to top shelf MMA and are appropriately hyped to be a part of it all. My experiences with Mick Gregor and Nurmagomedov aren't as clear-cut since they are interwoven. With boots on the ground for UFC 229, it was very clear that it was a historic event. There was a huge number of foreign fans who made the trip to Sin City and brought an amazing amount of energy to the atmosphere. Cheers and jeers all felt amplified. After Nurmagomedov won, there was a large gathering of Muslim fans in a victory dance outside of the T-Mobile Arena. 
I would imagine that Nurmagomedov defending his title against Dustin Poirier at UFC 242 would trump all of the aforementioned events. With it being held in Abu Dubai, expect an overwhelming majority of Muslim fans. Immediately following his victory at 229, the Dagestani champion went on a world tour hosted by politicians, dignitaries, and huge welcoming parades. The Eagle is a bona fide superstar outside of the United States and I expect 242 to further validate that statement. While we recognize the level of importance every time Jones is seen in the cage, it doesn't reach the cultural significance of Rousey influencing an entire generation of young girls or McGregor bringing the rowdy and loyal Irish fans to cheer him on. I'd have to say Nurmagomedov at 242 will outdo them all in terms of the in-arena experience and effects on the world outside the typical limits of the sport. According to a recent study, there are approximately 1.8 billion believers in the Islamic faith. While Nurmagomedov isn't going to suddenly bring that many fans to the sport, it is a huge net to cast. DLX, you expressed concern over the fact that UFC is cutting FLW because of the fact that it would leave less belts to promote. But wouldn't that also open the door for 165? Allow me to answer a question with a question. Why would the two have anything to do with one another? There is plenty of room for both the flyweights and the mythical 165-pounders. Either division would pull talent from the other and it's not like there aren't enough vacant spots on the many upcoming fight cards. It's simply a matter of what the UFC feels like doing. Let's block ads. Why? 